Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We have an opportunity to examine a situation that is very common in dental practice, and to uh, introduce the problem, I'll ask Mr. Rufer if he'll tell us uh, how he happened to come by this patient and what he discovered. Don Cheney, uh, my patient, presented as an orthodontic case in uh, January. And as I was undergoing the clinical examination of her, I happened to notice a, uh, a lump that was on her tongue, and I also noticed a small uh, red raised area above her left central incisor. And I happened to think these were interesting and decided to investigate further and call Dr. Rowe down to, uh, to look at them. Let's see, Don, would you raise your lip Let's look up above these teeth. Now there are three things that we can see right here. That is two in central incisors with uh, fractured uh, edges and then this little round red lump midway uh, between what you would expect the apex of the tooth to be in the crown right here. Can we get close in and, and see that uh, carefully? Notice it is raised and it is red. We'll manipulate it a little bit, just see what, what happens here. Does that hurt? Yes. Okay, let's try it this way, Don. Okay, stick your tongue out for us now, if you will. Okay, let's examine the tongue right in here. Fritz, would you tell us what you saw on the tongue? Why don't you describe the lesion to us? Well, when I first saw it on the tongue, I noticed uh, the raised area, it looked like a little uh, almost like a, a, a papilloma of some sort. It was a raised bump area, and it was kind of hard, and that uh, aroused my suspicions. All right. Now, you notice it blanches when I press on it. Does that mean anything to you? It means that it's vascularized. All right. It does have vascularity. Okay. Why, why do you think it is hard? You, you mentioned a little induration, a little uh, stiffness there. Why is that? Well, to run through the history of the lesion, she fell on, off a bicycle uh, when she was three years old, and her front teeth, her central incisors, went through her tongue, and she badly damaged the tongue. So, so then you, you have decided that this is scar tissue that yes. we're looking at. Yes, it was and sutured. The fact that it's round, uh, it, it looks like the textbooks describe fibroma, and of course this is an important point to make, that fibroma and scar histologically look identical. Do you want to tell us now about the uh, central incisors and what your conclusions are with regard to the lesion on the uh, gingiva? Well, Dawn fell also when she was five and when she was uh, seven. She fractured the right central incisor when she was five and the left when she was seven. The right is fractured more severely than the left one is, but the left uh, pulp appeared to be dead when I looked at it on the x-ray. There was a large, wide-open apex on the left incisor. The right incisor was, uh, had a closed apex. All right, we'll go to the x-ray in just a moment. However, let me ask you a question. Uh, when I saw you, we had no x-rays. What did you think uh, the patient's problem was when you, when you examined her clinically without x-rays? Without x-rays, I looked at the lesion. I was kind of unsure about what it was. I did notice the left incisor was fractured, so I suspected that it might be a periapical abscess. Let's go to the x-ray. So you clinically suspected periapical infection. What do you see on the x-ray? When we look on the x-ray, the tooth in question not only has a wide open apex, but it also has an area of radiolucency surrounding that apex. What does the open apex mean to you? It means that the tooth didn't complete its formation. But now, on the other hand, she's a rather young girl. How do you know that this isn't the normal state of development? Because the adjacent incisor has a closed apex. Very good. Very good. Let's uh, leave that x-ray now and move to this one. What do you make of the fact that the patient was not draining pus from the uh, perilous of the gingiva? At the present time? Yes. That the abscess right now isn't active. And uh, this is a function of two factors. One is the host resistance, in this case a young girl uh, that is healthy, and the second has to do with the virulence of the organisms. All right, let's, uh, we have established the value of the x-ray. 
Let's look at the uh, recent X-ray that you have uh, and explain what you have found. When you look at the Panorex, which was just taken this morning, we can see that central incisor, the apex, the adjacent uh, radiolucent area. We'll also notice on the, uh, the lateral incisor, there is also a, a slight shortening of that apex. While on the other side of the mouth, the central incisor does have the completely formed root, and it looks like the root is a little better formed on that lateral on that side also. The apical area is a little difficult to evaluate in this film. I was uh, pointing particularly to uh, a rather conspicuous problem here. What did you notice? Well, here we notice there's a congenitally missing second mandibular bicuspids. Good. So here you can see with a quick clinical examination, cause and effect relationships are apparent, and the value of the x-ray has been clearly demonstrated, as well as the fact that when one notices one area of pathology, one should always keep uh, half an eye open for other things that are going on. And uh, an astute student and a cooperative patient have uh, made this apparent. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.